This one and then show them some cool. Okay. Not very much. Wow. I got my iPad. She had some good time there. I know a little bit about Leanna. I think two in a row is not bad. Three in a row. Yeah. I was I Dallas with my third one. Okay. And then I bring the. I just kept finding out that I was not paying attention to her. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you see the yes. Yeah. Sean, I sent you an invite. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's running now. Yeah, I got it. Oh, you Oh, there it is. <laughs> I knew I was done with it. I just don't remember what I do with it. I got it, Dan. I had his. I had it. I had. I had his. I had it. Thank you. Yeah, I got him. No, I got him. Charge. Oh man, Google Sites looking like popular session. I know. Oh, It's just not reliable any other way. Okay, you should have email now.
Ready? Hey. Hi, we're almost out of time. Uh, my name is Sean Holland, uh, and I work with Owen here, who will be moderating this uh, little hangout on air. Uh, I work at UAF eLearning, and I'm going to talk to you about Google Sites. Now, um, the, 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 the title of the seminar has changed a bit. If you've been keeping track of their schedule, it was it was collaboration in Google Sites, and then it was working together in Google Sites, and then I decided, you know what, let's just get started in Google Sites. So <laughs> um, I'm really going to try to not get into the technical how to this and that. Um, I think that can be kind of frustrating, um, especially when we only have about really 45 minutes uh, to do it. So I'm going to try to listen to you and get an idea of why you're here and what you someday would like to do with the Google site. Can you see, oh, there we go. Why is that not hiding? Hmm. Can you see that? I see, yep, I see it. It's not hiding. Oh, down there? I am. It's not in the broadcast. OK. So we're just going to quickly confirm that Sites is a Google app. Sites is a Google app. All right, we did it. <laughs> um, and talk about our goals, the feelings. I, I, having talked to some of you yesterday after the sessions, I really wanted to, kind of from a selfish standpoint and also from a professional standpoint, to hear what your stories are and what your challenges are. And if anything, after this session is over, I want, even if you don't know how to actually create a Google site, which I hope you do kind of sort of, um, I want you to at least feel better about this as a tool and have some more familiarity with it. Um, I do have some good examples to show you. Uh, you're not going to leave totally empty-handed, and those links are actually on our session site, on our Google site, um, and they're linked in this presentation, which is also uh, embedded on that uh, site. We'll go over just the basics of creating a site. I'm not going to ask you to do it, so if you want to do it, you can, but um, other than Janine, we have no real tech support to help you do that. Um, that's Janine back there. She's assisting me. And I'll talk a bit about publicity and permissions because the original title of this was working together and collaboration and, and that's something you can do with it's what makes a Google site a Google site and not just a website. The ability to control who can see it and who can do what to what parts of the site. So um, I'm not gonna look at every little setting. We're not going to describe every button. You guys are pretty button literate by now. Uh, we're not going to go down every drop down menu and jump down the rabbit hole. We're not going to look at every process. If you want to do these things, um, I would suggest you attend tomorrow's three hour session. I checked eight of you in here are attending that session tomorrow. Can I see your hand if you're going? What's it called tomorrow? It's called Design Your Course Site. Like in the classroom? Yes. Yeah. And Jennifer Moss is going to focus, and I'll be there with her. She's leading the presentation. Uh, she's going to focus on specifically designing a site for a course. Um, and I think that could be expanded on to for a class as well. Um, also, um, to put this as politely as possible, there is a lot of great info on Google. This is just one resource. This is the official. Google resource, um, Beginner's Guide to Creating a Google Site. Looks like this. It's easy, step by step. If I were to go this, through this with you step by step, we'd be here for the next two hours, probably. So um, I want to avoid that and give you that resource. Suggest that you attend tomorrow's session if you're really um, 
uh, interested in that. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Actually, if you are attending our session, you're going to be like rock stars if you go through that and familiarize yourself with some some things. Okay, go back through. Maybe this will hide. No. Okay, so um, just before I start asking to hear your voices, uh, these are just three of the kind of really obvious uses for Google Sites uh, for an educator. Um, website for your classroom. Um, you could set different pages to have different permissions. So you could have a page that only your parents could see. You could have a page that only one student can edit. Um, you can have a certain level of control over different parts of the site. So if, um, if, if Janine is a parent for one of the students, she'll go to the site, and there's a page that it won't appear to people who aren't parents or to students. And you can uh, set different settings in different parts. Um, student portfolios uh, that only you can see, but it gives students um, practice creating a website skills in that in that um, area. And if you there you had some kind of a permissions process or privacy um, release form in place, those could possibly be featured. Um, I know that elementary has different concerns than um, definitely than higher education, but you know K twelve is, is well different. Um, the, the third one uh, would be to use it as kind of a sharing site for professional development for lesson plans. Um, that could hopefully live on beyond its flash in the pan and, hey, let's do this, great idea. To tell you the truth, a lot of the Google sites that are there out, discoverable on the web, are things that were made like in 2009 for someone's organization and it, hasn't, it obviously hasn't been updated since then. Um, but if you have more than one stakeholder creating it and managing it, it, it's, it's possible to kind of have a momentum that if it's something that your institution comes to really value. And I think that Google Sites are simple enough and robust enough to, to achieve that. Um, that and you could add balance. Google as time to resolve. Right. So you bring someone new and they, or someone new is yes. a teaching position and someone else them with the exchange. Yes, and because it's integrated into Google Apps for Education, like anything else, you don't really have to. That process of sharing it with, with that new person is going to be the same as sharing documents. Um, in fact, the, the window looks the same. We'll, we'll take a look at that at the end of the session. So I kind of want to know what you guys are here for and what you, if you have a specific task on your to-do list, what that is or if you just have a, a, an idea for how you might use it. Um, you don't have to have one right now, but I know that some of you might be here for a real a specific reason. So yes, please. I actually am so new to Google, I I don't really know what's possible with it. Okay. So as I'm learning about all these different pieces, it's like, you know, my brain is about ready to explode with all the things that, you know, the stuff can do. And so I don't know what sites can do. Okay, that's a really useful. Uh, salient point because a lot of times we in especially these kind of sessions where you're learning all these things and yes it's all Google but it's like oh my god what is, what is this? I can't use that. You might you might find later on that you actually can use it or there's a way to use it that you didn't know about before. Um, so I think maybe when we look at some examples of actual live sites that are pretty pretty good, you might um be inspired. So thank you. Yes. I wanted to know whether um, I have a, um, a department that you know seems married to Blackboard, and I I'm not. We're all in the um, same marriage. And so <laughs> one of the things, though, I didn't want to end up having lots of sites to manage, and if I created one, so what I was wondering is if it was possible to create. A page for each of the classes that I'm teaching, um, you know. So there's a, you know, my website. But then each, you know, that semester there's a page that the student will go to the website, but they go to a specific page that they're given 
I am 95% positive that that's what we need to How would this either be if you're using Google Classroom or Canvas or some other, you know, site for assigning things and collecting things? Do, does that replace having a Google site for your classroom or how would they be used together? You could use them together. I'm not sure what the integration would be with Google Classroom. Or does Google Classroom kind of replace that? It could replace it. Classroom Most of the things that I'm going to show you are, because you, you can do a lot with permissions, you can do a lot with saying, okay, this page is, this group five is going to have this page, and only these four people can access this page. And then make a page for all your like um, study groups or work groups or presentation groups, things like that. You can do that. but. Within, and I think Jen will talk more about that tomorrow, but just in terms of within, within reason, like what is reasonably possible to create. Because it's very easy to like to create a site and say, I just created a site, but there's nothing there. And you know, you can't guarantee that anyone's going to use that. Um, so I don't think it replaces those. Um, I think the Google site use is pretty specific, at least in my experience from how it's been used. To tell you the truth, some of the designers and I were discussing earlier, Google Sites is kind of, it feels kind of like Google's orphan child. Um, it's been around a long time, but it's, it's like a, a regular old website with permissions and sharing layered on top of that. Like, websites are not new, you know? <laughs> Commenting is not new. Uh, but being able to control a website within your own domain, that, that has some value. So. Um, it's not, it's, and, and, and now that you know about those tools, like if you were to use Canvas and Google Classroom and Google Sites, you'd probably go crazy. So, so choosing one, um, and I think Google Sites is especially suited toward elementary level, uh, from, from doing some research and searching for sites, a lot of what I see are classroom pages, school pages for K-12, especially K-12 through six or so. And then professional portfolio pages for um, portfolio pages for students and then professional sort of like, uh, I'll show you one of a professor at university. Um, that, those kind of seem to be the, the standard of paradigms of Google Sites. Uh, so yeah, anyone else? Why are you here today? Does anyone, does anyone have a Google site that they're working on? That they have? That, I started a couple years ago. Okay. It's sort of one of those pages that you talked about. All right. And I got nervous about what I could do and what I can do. Okay. Who intends to, within the next school year, to create a site? Okay. What, what do you want to make? I want to see. I don't know. Okay, you want to do something. Okay, how about you? What's your idea? Uh, kind of the same thing. Okay. I'm not really sure what you got. Okay. All right. Let's look at some examples. And if you have um, further thoughts or questions, please stop me. Um, so this is just a, a list of links. These are on the, this is all on the site, which you can get to from SCED um, or our Google site. Do you, are you guys on there? Okay. So it might, um, I'll be showing you a, a view of the page and I'll be clicking through, but it might be useful if you were on it as well and you can control your own um, destiny. So uh, I found this one for a, an entire school district in Arkansas. And I, I like it because it's um, very simple, but it seems to be very functional. Um, they have several Google sites for um, all of their schools, middle school through junior high, high school. They've got Google Maps embedded in Google sites of all their schools. You can find out where they are. Uh, they have a Google Calendar, their, their school year, right there. Um, really, it's, there's only a few clicks and you can get to some really relevant information about their um, 
school district. How many of you are going to design a new site for your school district? <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. Okay. Um, this is one that's just a single school. And they actually have kind of a lot of stuff. And there's some acronyms here that I don't understand. Maybe you can enlighten me. <coughs> um, standard, what is standards of learning? OK, so they have links to their state standards. Um, they have, what is this? This is a Picasso slideshow, another Google product that's embedded <coughs> inside of the site. Each grade level has its own site. They got YouTube videos embedded in there. I really like this one. This is uh, a site for an entire grade level. So three teachers are sharing that. So divide some of the labor and kind of keeps things. Um, uh, this is actually the, the welcome site, the landing page for this. And they have uh, contact information for the teachers. This is another um, slideshow. <coughs> News, some announcements, standard stuff, some external links for games and things. But what I really like is this news page, which if you scroll down, I mean, this is, this is recent. This was May 18th this year, end of the school year. But if you scroll down, you get to the bottom, and you see you're only looking at 10 out of 74 posts. So this, these teachers are posting three times a week to update their uh, school newsletter. And if anyone is familiar with an RSS feed, you can actually subscribe to this using a, a news reader. Um, uh, you can use an app on your phone. And things like that. So, uh, if you have, I don't know how you. Everyone has a different sort of way of gathering news, but you could have these. It's set up so that if you're a parent, these little posts get pushed to your phone and says, "Hey, second grade news. Make sure that your student brings their galoshes for the, you know, field trip, fun trip today, or something like that." Yeah, um, and that way it's. You know, it's a little bit easier than sending an email. People can go and check it. It's accessible. So, yeah. Did you have a, a thought? I was wondering if um, now, like, their, their lesson plan aren't really on there. Like, they're, I'm wondering, like, how much freedom they have to figure out what they're teaching as far as how much they do together. Like, how much freedom they have to figure out what they're teaching and what they're not teaching. Mm. You know what I mean? It's kind of a neat idea. I was wondering. Yeah. Um, you know, this. General? This one's pretty basic, uh, and you know each teacher does have their own little homeroom page. But it looks like that's just it has a schedule, it has some homework. Let's click that, see what it does. Okay, so really, It seems like you know you get students and you're giving those you know forms you have to give. It's just nice that you know, have it all. Right. So um, uh, if, if anyone was in my um, Google Drive session, you we talked a bit about how you could have a a, a, fold, a shared folder that holds you know, permission slips and forms and things that I'm sure you've all dealt with the problem of having you know, like an update is made, and then you have the old version, and that doesn't work. But if you update it in Google Docs, like let's say your your admin person, your secretary, has ownership and edit privileges, they update that. Anytime someone accesses it from some from that point, it's going to be new. It's going to be up to date. So instead of having it, this is a this is a PDF, but you could have this as a Google Doc and have it published um, in this page. Where am I? And. Instead of going to a PDF, the homework could be for the commission slip or the, the you know publicity release form or whatever it could be right there. So it could be a way to kind of synchronize and yeah. streamline that administrative stuff. 
So, but the reason I like this site is because it's really simple. You don't have to make a fancy, uh, amazing looking site. And Jen will teach you how to do that tomorrow. It'll be amazing. I guarantee you it'll be, it'll be an amazing site. But you don't have to. It can be easy, kid-friendly colors and some pictures and some clip art. And it's, it's really about the accessibility, the information, and the ease of management for the, for the, the teacher. We all have enough to do. We don't need to be spending hours a day managing the website that was supposed to make our lives easier. So uh, this is this is a template uh, that Google provides. Um, they have some other ones that you can uh, use. This could be this is a template that you could use. You can go to copy to your Google site and change. You know, change these things. If you use it as is, you can change the images, you can change the colors. Um, so it's, it's okay to steal. No, it's not stealing. It's to, to borrow, to reuse, recycle. You know, don't reinvent the wheel and don't, don't get freaked out if you don't know how to use HTML. Um, Google Sites does a pretty good job of making you um, uh, sort of letting you. Remain as ignorant as you would like to be of those kinds of books. It's a running. Yeah. So yeah, focus on the content and not on the, um, the uh, nuts and bolts. So um, this is a portfolio. I'm, I'm, this is something I found um, on Universe UAA's Google site, Google Sites. If you're in the UA system, actually, even if you aren't, this one is public, which is why I'm, I feel okay showing it to you because it's it's not something that only I am supposed to be able to see. This is their um, a portfolio, and it has some of their educational insights. He has some of his um, uh, papers, his resume on this site, um, some photos. So this would be something that would be good to show. It. Employer um, could be it may, have, it could, may have been required for some sort of graduating assessment. Um, this could be the sort of thing that you could have a um, you know for a, a, an art course. You know those products, those artifacts of learning, can be can exist in one place. You could get permission to say use that as, as an example for future students. Um, Portfolio is a kind of, I think, one of the best ways to use Google Sites because it's not that hard to create a site. There's all these templates there. You can keep it. You can make it private. Um, only you can see it, but you can also send it to the public, and the student can can take it with them. Um, and I know there was some confusion about that with the university. Technically, at some point, if you graduate, all of your stuff in your account. It's supposed to go away. It's it's a I think it's a year. There's no official, but you can copy those things out to your personal account. You can copy an entire Google site. Not just copy it. You could take this site. If I if this for me and this for my site, and I'm graduated, and I'm just like, okay, goodbye, to the University of Alaska. I don't like you anymore. I'm going to keep this for myself. Um, all I have to do is add my personal email address. Give myself ownership, then wipe out the ownership from my old one. So um, it's it's not totally locked down, but it can be. Am I moving too fast? Was that playing a load? Okay. Right, just a couple more. This is um, this is a professor at the university. This popped up. I think he just updated this um, profile site. So this this is more something more geared toward uh, if you're a professor who you know has community outreach type of stuff and need to have more of a public presence than if you're um, uh, a classroom teacher with uh, students and parents who already know you um, has a list of his courses and, and this is nice because this is totally updated. This means spring 2016, fall 2015, so you can get a pretty good. Um, 
you know, updated idea of what he's up to. And it's nice and gentle and clean. I probably didn't take him too long. Um, I, I, Gary's not a web designer, is he, Janine? No, he's not. He's a language specialist. What? He's a language specialist. I know that, yeah, but I just didn't know what his web design skills um, were. Well, he does do incredible Yeah. Um, so, and then this, oops, this is something that I created as an exercise. I called it Sean Boring Test. And I created a blog, called my gossip blog. Um, it's really dumb. Mm -hmm. um, I embedded my Google Calendar, which um, we can see what the things are on this, um, but anyone else couldn't. It's only because I'm logged in. Um, and you can search the site. Uh, I'll, and I'll come back to this later when I'm showing you how to do a few things. So um, I wanted to tell you real quick how I found these. These are all public on the web. But I didn't go to Google and search for these. I went to the, well, actually, the first few I did, the, the school in Arkansas, I found that through a Google search. Um, but the other ones, I went to the domain and viewed all the public sites that are hosted in that domain. So the University of Alaska, and these links are, they work, they, they go right to the, um, the domain. So the University of Alaska, so I go to browse sites, it has all these, these tags. When you create a site there, you can have the name of the site, but you can also tag it with certain um, keywords, and that helps in searches. But if I go to all sites, So it's only showing ones in Alaska.edu. So if I go to, let me, excuse me. If I go to um, this in a, an incognito window, which is not going to have any of my login information. And, I and you're not sharing that just. Just what? That you're not sharing it. Okay. It's not necessarily to brief, brief example. But Oops. Yeah. Actually, why don't I skip this? So, um, so basically, if you go to if you if you guys click this link, it's going to show up correctly for you. But I'm, it's because I'm logged into the university account um, that it shows up. It, def it it wants to show me sites that are in my domain. But if you go there, you're going to see the public ones. Um, and there's a lot. There's hundreds. Um, the Fairbanks North Star School District, if you go there, and I go to all uh, browse sites, all sites, I can only see public sites because I'm not part of their domain. So these sites that are shared here are, it says shared with everyone in the world. Anybody can see that. Um, and I don't know if they chose to make it like that. That's probably fine if they did. Um, but they are shared publicly, and there are about 70 of them that show up. Oh, there's a dessert auction. It's for United Way. Oh, there's a banana foster pie. That looks awesome. Look at that. You can see who bid on it. That's actually pretty cool. Where do you go to see when this is last updated? Um, the top of the home page or something. It may not be possible to see that inside the page. Let's go back. Where did that go? There it is. I don't know. You can't tell. Um, if, if, I, if I were, if I had some permissions on, I'd come see that, but I can't. It's got 2014 in the URL. Right. So that's oh, the, that's when it was created in the Yeah, that's that's actually the name of the site. So, um, so Fairbanks North Star, North Star. What, what that tells us is that 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 school district has allowed their users to make their sites public if they choose to. 
But if we go to the Anchorage School District, we go to all sites, there are three sites there. And there, none of them are full sites. None of them are flushed out. They're probably mistakes, or they were created before they changed permissions or something. And then if you go to the Matsu School District, you can't even see sites. You need to sign in. And I can't because I don't have any credentials with the Matsu School District. Um, so that's something that was a choice was made, or maybe there was a not a choice made. I don't. It, 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 some of these settings could be defaults, or they could have been set up in as a reaction to something, or there was an actual policy that was set. Um, but it's, I think it's important to before you start making a site to understand what the possibilities are for visibility. Because it's possible for your site to be visible to everyone in the world, or to only you, or to only people in your school district, or to only the 20 students you have, probably 30, isn't it, in your classroom, um, plus parents, plus whoever is associated with that. Okay. So sharing is kind of the same as any Google app. You can set different permissions for different pages. And I'm not going to show this to you yet. I just want to give you an idea of what you could do. So you can have my site be publicly visible. Someone goes to the site. They can see the site. There's stuff there. And I give site-wide editing privileges. To me, I'm the owner. I say, hey, Janine, you know your stuff. I trust you. I'm going to give you editing privileges to the whole site um, and Heidi. And then Owen and Kristen, they're you know they're not really part of my uh, bubble, so I'm just gonna give them the gossip blog page, and they can edit that. Of course, I'm I'm the owner. We're editors of the whole site, so we can go in there and change that. But they can only mess around inside the blog page. They can see the whole site. They can only do that. That's just one possible configuration of a site with permissions, and this is actually pretty simple. You can get much more complex by having all of the pages that are shared with specific people. It could be complicated, but it's possible. Yes? I have a question as far as if we created a site and if it's through like UAF or the, the school district, can there be gurus of gurus if something happened to you? Because um, that's the reason right now that our department wants blocked. Or because if something happened to me, I was in a car accident or whatever, they mandate that we share with our chair. But if something that serious happened, OIT always has God oh, powers right. over your okay. account. Yeah. So the same thing would be true. I, all I'm, I'm just yeah. trying to think of her argument. Whoever the admin is, is going to always trump your access level. So um, oh, man, friends with them. Do you guys all know who your admin is? Yes. <laughs> Good. Good. It's like, uh, has anyone ever listened to our our talks back? Yeah. Okay, yeah. One of, one of their um the things that I always recommended people when they did have to take their car to the mechanic was to bring them brownies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cookies. Just bring it, and then you know, and then your mechanic's probably gonna just be a lot nicer to you in the whole process. So bring your bring your admin. Uh, brownie. Um, so we only have about 10 minutes, almost more than 10 minutes left. So I deliberately wanted to not give you enough time to create a site so that we, we didn't get into this thing and we're like, oh my gosh, we're running out of time. So um, you can make a site in three minutes, but the useful site you're going to need, let's see, I would say about three hours tomorrow from 8 30 in <laughs> um, but you're going to need to have some, some time. And I would say you can go in right now and click Create Site. If you go to sites.google.com, um, I am in full screen. What are you talking about? That's our site. If you go to here to the Create button, you can click Create. Let's say this one with a blank, blank template. I'll say session site. Um, 
Oops. And I put the create button again. I just created a site. Done. Well, not done because there's nothing there. We don't have anything planned. But here it is. I have my home page. I have my site. I can search this site even though I have nothing. Okay. You want to do that? I think somebody wants to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of people do that, and that's why there's 70 <laughs> yes. public sites on the Fairbanks. Right. Like, oh, I have one on the Which list. is why you should probably do this, mess around, and then. I have three that I just. Yeah, don't be afraid to delete them. <laughs> and if you delete them, they will sit in a trash folder, but they will go away after 30 days, they're in the trash. Can you retrieve them if they're in that trash folder? If you do it before 30 days passes. How do you do that? So go back to. Oh, I just clicked on sites and I found it. Yeah, sites, deleted sites. I don't have any in there. If I have deleted some, I did it more than 30 days ago. It's something to keep in mind, though, because on in my drive, things never get deleted if you delete them. They just sit in your trash. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's easy to get started, but it's a web site you're making. And ask anybody who's ever managed a website. And it can be as complicated or as in-depth or as wide varying as you want it to be and probably more than you do want it to be. So um, the other thing that I would suggest is if you're not attending tomorrow's session, and even if you are actually, is not only go over those Google resources that I shared in the presentation, but draw, sketch it out. Make make a make a, a hierarchy of what you want. Imagine what are my five main pages? What kind of content do I want? Do I want pictures? Think about the things you want to have in a site and what you want it to be for. It's easy to just throw a bunch of stuff up um, by making it um, and you know, let me make it look nice at first. Make it usable, make it accessible, make it relevant. So look at that. We have nine minutes to talk about uh, you guys. Oh, what did I? Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess you know I plan on doing that three hour workshop tomorrow. Awesome. Other than watching that tutorial video, is there anything I could or should do to prepare or to get the leg up? I mean, my ultimate goal is to have a functional, nice looking. Website. Okay, my class next year. So, yeah. uh, site for what level are you teaching at? High school science. High school science. Okay, so you're going to have one site that's kind of houses all of your classes. Four separate classes. Okay, so think about how that's going to be organized. And you might even prepare some content. Uh, maybe you put it in Google Drive um, and have that ready to go tomorrow so you're not trying to find it and hunt it down. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's something to do. Under the templates, mm -hmm. I don't know whether you have the same permission or not, but there are several assignments teaching. If you click on the schools of education, mm -hmm. there are several science ones that are popping up science. Yeah. So um, this is another thing to show you before we go, um, especially if you're not coming tomorrow. I, I use the blank template because I use just showing you that you can create a site even if it's blank. But if you click on Browse the Gallery, there's a lot of, that's probably where I found that. Um, you think that was the top one? Yeah, I really dug deep for that one. <laughs> 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 um, but you can go through, and they're sorted by um, theme, activities, and events. Um, this one looks suspiciously like our, um, I think, does this? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So there's lots, lots. You can really, and Google Sites has come a long way, I think, in the last few years, especially with themes. It was at one point you were like, "That's a Google Site." I know that's a Google Site. It's weird yes. looking and it's small and it's small as a box. But now they're a lot more customizable with themes, to where if it doesn't say this site is this is powered by Google Sites, you don't read that. You can actually um, make some pretty nice insights. I mean, Janine, what would you say in that? On that point, you're a better web designer than me. Yeah. I would say they've got some simple, classic, elegant ones, which would be confused for good web design. 
<laughs> so the templates are good web design. Okay. I remember a little over the top, but um, they, yeah, you can make a very robust site that doesn't necessarily look like you built it. You have a Google site. And you can help us find those templates tomorrow. Oh, well. Yes. I know that Jennifer's going to go oh, over some. Jennifer. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I selected that template. And I think sometimes if you select a template, it can take a little while to do this. One sat for me last night for a while. Yeah, there we go. Um, but once you've selected this template, you can actually go back and um, change the template. Change page template. Go back and why does it only have these? Interesting how much UAA has. I know. I think they have. They've had a portfolio. Is that right? On oh, it has yes. like a program where they encourage students to create portfolios for. I'm not sure what program it was, but they got a lot there. Yeah, I know that's one of the students' programs, like their health for early childhood. They're happy for our students to create. And they're sort of test ones for CRCD right now to see how that goes with the idea and maybe more of the program to move that way. I think portfolios can be really great. They're done. Well, it's maybe getting done. Any other questions? We got, if you guys want to leave it early, you can. Otherwise, we can stay in chat for five minutes. Um, if you would please be so kind, um, we had a Yes, if you haven't signed in, uh, who's got it, who's got it? Anyone else need it still? Um, if you have time, we have session evaluations um, for each session, this one included. So I'd like to hear your thoughts. Um, be brutal there. They're, they're sort of anonymous. Um, <laughs> I can't read. I can't read. Um, but uh, there's a link here in the the presentation and it's also on sketch and on the site. Um, so yeah. thanks. Stick around if you have any other questions.